Hi guys, this is Mike back with another Python Django tutorial for you today. Now, this time we're going to cover how to simplify the creation of URLs. Now, previously we used to just basically go onto a home page or something like that, um, and we would type in to make a link, we'd go something along the lines of uh, this, so href and then we'd put the path to it. So say we had a contact page, for instance, we'd say something like that. Then put the name contact in there. And then we just basically move on. And that would be okay for you know your bog standard small site. Now, what happens if for some reason in the back end, your views change? Now, in our example pro project, we've got three different views. Now, say we have uh, a home view, an about view, and a contact view. In if some future time, we might change things. Say, for instance, we have a contact page which just currently shows our address and our email address. We don't need anything complicated for that. But say we wanted a contact page that then has something along the lines of taking information from a, a, a an input box or something like that on that page. If we want to do that, we might then consider moving that out to being a separate um, app all of its own outside of our standard site. If we want to do that, then this particular view here then becomes pointless and useless. It also means that if we want to change things, we're going to have to stick to the whole URL naming system that we've stuck to here. It means that contact will always have to be the place where we find this on the website. Now, if we want to make that a bit more flexible, we can then start using um, something which is really nifty about Django is that we can use a template tag called URL. Now what we can do instead of just typing in that full path is we can then use uh, this method here, URL. And instead of referring to the, URL, the actual uh, view itself, we can then just refer to it by a name that we give it. Now we can use URL in two different ways. There's the, the the inflexible way, which is where we would have, for instance, in our site, we'd have standard site dot views dot uh, contact. And if we stuck with that, then that would always look into our specific set of URLs that are defined and look in the views file for here. So it would always point, for instance, to this contact function inside of our views file here. However, if we were to just name this contact, it wouldn't matter where this actual view well, was actually uh, referenced in the code. So it could be outside of our standard app. It could actually be inside of a completely different app altogether. Now, how do we do that? The way that we do that is in our URLs file. We take it further than just defining our bog standard URL. So first of all, let's just define this home URL, but we'll define it in a way that makes it more flexible. So the standard way we would do that is we'd, do, we'd basically say, uh, this is our homepage and there's the pattern to recognize that, but then we then put standard site.views.home in there. To make that more flexible, we can then in add an, add an extra, extra parameter. And the extra parameter is name equals home. So that when we come to create our URLs, we can just basically reference like we did in this code here, 
the actual name of it. And we're not being specific to where that's located in the whole URL system. We're just basically saying, give me the URL that matches the name contact inside of here. So let's just define that for our next three functions. So we've got about our next two functions rather. We've got about and contact. So if we do the same here, about links through and we're going to name it about. And then after that, we're going to do the same for contact. And again, that's going to be called contact. Okay. Now, now that we've done that, we can then go ahead and add some things in. Now, in my base template for here, instead of sticking my navigation in with the base template, I'm actually going to restrict it into a nav HTML. Now, there it is. Now, how do we actually make sure that this gets included? Well, we're going to use another tag that we haven't introduced in the series so far, which is called the include tag. So it works similar to the tag where we've got extends and then extends the base HTML tag, except we use the keyword include just to say include this file rather than extend it. So inside of our base HTML, we put the word include nav.html and the, the Django system will then shoot off, get the contents of nav, process it like it was another template and then include the output into this placeholder inside of the base HTML. So in our nav, we're basically going to do the three links, but we're going to do it in the named way, not in the way that we would normally use the URL function. So the first link, we're going to say a link to URL home. And that will give us a link to our home page. Then we're going to do a link to the about and then a link to the contact. Now, we've created these three links. If we make any changes in the back end from now on, the URL system will automatically work out where the contact view will be located, whether it's in this current uh, module that we've created or whether we create a new app and that deals with it. So we've made this very, very flexible. Okay, so just check that we've got everything else in order. Our base HTML templates there. Okay, let's just go ahead and run this. Hopefully everything's gonna work okay. Okay. Looks like I'm already running a version of the server. Ah, yeah, of course I am. Okay, so we'll just kill that and try again. There. Okay, so if we go over to our browser and then we'll go to our web page, we can see there that this is the home page site, and in our navs at the top. We've got home, and as you can see down in the bottom left-hand corner here, when I hover over that, it's telling us that the links to the home, about, links to the about URL, and the contact changes that too. So you can see that it still works exactly the same way as it used to do, but now we have a much more flexible situation where we can then move things around and not have to depend on the absolute paths to views in our URL system. So if we do change the location of our about page or our home page, it doesn't necessarily have to stay within the structure of these files. It can be moved around and this URL referencing scheme will be flexible enough to make sure that wherever we move it, it'll still be linked to correctly when it comes to actually presenting the links to our users on the other end of the internet. 
Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed that tutorial and uh, I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorials along. Thanks for watching.